Welcome back to my channel, Simplified English 101. If you are new to this channel, please remember, like this video, leave a comment. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel and ring that good old notification bell so that you can be informed when a new video is posted. In today's video, we are going to look at in details what is construction shape, how to understand and identify shift in sentences, and how to correct these. Let's begin. The objectives for today's lessons are one, to explain the term construction shift, to list causes of shifting sentences, to identify the different construction shifts and explain how to avoid them, and of course, to find the techniques to use and correct these sentence errors. The first question that we want to answer is what is a construction shift? To understand this, we need to understand what is construction and what is shift. Let's deconstruct these words. The term construction means to build, to create, or to recreate. The word shift means to move or a slight change in position. Construction shift would concentrate on recreating a sentence or shift phrases, whether it be tense or parts of speech in a sentence based on the instructions given. For you to do so, you need to understand how these shifts occur and how these shifts can change the overall meaning of a sentence. For this particular aspect of the paper one exam, you are going to be given sentences and each sentence will give you a particular instruction, whether it be to begin the sentence like this or to replace a word with a phrase or a phrase with a word. You will also be given a list of options Options that you will be asked to use in reconstructing your sentence. The aim is not to change the overall meaning of the sentence, but to reconstruct the sentence so that it is grammatically correct. Now, if that is clear, what we need to now understand is how is it that we can avoid different shifting sentences. Let us look at a first example. The first sentence reads, she caught the ball and throws it to the catcher for the out. For us to identify what the shift is or how the shift created an error in the sentence, we need to first identify what is the shift. The question therefore is, what has caused this shift or error in this particular sentence? Please notice that the sentence began by saying she caught and then the next verb says Shows. It is clear that the shift is created by a shift in the verb tense. Note that the first verb is in the past tense, caught, and the second verb is in the present tense, shows. The sentence begins in the past tense, caught, and shifts to the present tense, shows, without any valid reason or cause. This clearly has created an error in the sentence. How then, since we know what the shift is, how could we correct this? Except for exceptional cases where the intended meaning requires a change in the verb tense, then we can do so. But for this particular sentence, we want to ensure that we maintain the same verb at all times throughout. How then do we reconstruct the sentence? We can do so by making both verbs present or both verbs past tense. She caught the ball and threw it to the catcher or she catches the ball and throws it to the catcher. Let us look at another example. The second example reads, when the children turned on the TV, a buzzing sound was heard. The question again is, what has caused the shift or error in this particular sentence? For you to identify the shift in the sentence, you need to understand what the sentence is saying. It is clear that in the first part of the sentence, it is the children, the door of the action, who turned on the TV. However, in the second part of the sentence, we are left wondering who or what heard this buzzing sound. It is therefore clear that the shift in the sentence is caused by a change in the voice of the verb. Notice that for the first part of the sentence, we are told that the children are the ones who turned on the TV. However, by the end of the sentence, we are left to wonder who heard the buzzing sound 
or who made the buzzing sound. Remember that when writing a sentence, there should be no vagueness about the action being done or the do of. If this is not done, we will create a dangling or misplaced modifier. To avoid this, we need to ensure that the voice of the verb remains the same. We need to first identify the voice being used. However, I want you to understand that in English language, the active voice is the subject doing the action and the passive voice is the receiver of the action. In this particular sentence, it is clear that the children are doing the action. It means, therefore, that throughout the entire sentence, this should be clear for all actions performed. We correct this sentence by ensuring that the voice of the verb remains the same throughout the sentence. Either it is active or it is passive. We need to first ensure that we identify the voice and we make sure that the voice remains the same throughout the sentence. Either it is active doing the action or it is passive receiving the action. We can correct the sentence by saying when the children turned on the TV, they heard a buzzing sound. Let us move on to another. The sentence reads, if someone wants to play games, you must first First, follow the rule. The question is, what has caused this shift or error in the sentence? It is clear that there are two different pronouns used in the sentence. It is clear that this change in the point of view has created an error in the sentence. Question now is, how do we correct this shift? We correct the shift by maintaining or ensuring that the sentence requires and keeps only one point of view. By doing so, we ensure that sentence remains consistent. Let us move on to look at how to avoid Another example of a error and or shift in a sentence. The sentence reads, when someone calls, tell them I'm not at home. The question is, what has caused the shift or error in the sentence? Subject verb agreement, it has changed from someone to them. So again, we see these different points of view or shift in the pronoun. It is clear that there is a shift in number. We correct this by ensuring that the subject verb always agree. The sentence now reads, one, when someone calls, tell him or her I'm not at home, or when they call, tell them I'm not at home. Let us now look at a sample question to see if we could identify the shift in this sentence. First of all, I want to point out that this is the way the sentences are set up in the paper one exam for English, where the construction shift items occur. You will get a sentence, you will get an instruction of how to recreate the sentence plus answer options. The sentence reads, Peter does not intend to meet with us in the near future. The instruction says that you are going to begin the sentence with phrase Peter has and the options that you have to select from are A, declared, B, decided, C, explained, and D, denied. The questions are, which option would you use and why and how would you reconstruct the sentence to select the correct option? First of all, you need to identify what is the sentence about and how do we reconstruct. The sentence is saying that Peter has clearly made a decision and the decision is to not meet with them in the future. It is clear that based on the original sentence, there is a change in the verb tense from does not intend to has, as well as a change in the main verb intend and the option now is to select one of these main verbs to replace intend. It means therefore that we're looking for a word or phrase that will mean the same as does not intend to or shows that a decision has been made. The word declared means to openly make an announcement. The original sentence did not say that Peter made an announcement. Clearly, declared would be out. The word decided means definite or clear or to be obvious. Based on the original sentence, Peter's decision is clear and resolute. So it means that decided could be a viable option. Explained means to justify. Peter clearly already made up his mind and did not need to justify anyone. The word denied means to refuse. Clearly, that would automatically be out. Based on the context of the sentence, the best verb to use would be decided. The sentence could be reconstructed as Peter has decided to not meet with us. Let us now recap. Based on the slides that we saw earlier, a shift in a sentence can be caused by change in the subject verb agreement, change in the tense, change in the voice, change in the point of view, change in the number. 
Now that we have looked at that, let us look at some special cases. There are many special cases, words and or phrases that can cause a shift in a sentence. Let's look at some of these. How to use hardly, scarcely, and barely. The words hardly, barely, and scarcely are seen as adverbs. That an adverb is a word that modifies or describes a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. The adverbials hardly, scarcely, barely are often used to emphasize that one event quickly followed another. All of the above phrases introduce the events that occurred first. So hardly, scarcely, and barely will introduce the first event and it is used to denote simultaneous actions. It means therefore that we're going to have two events occurring in a sentence. One will happen before another. The verb describing the earlier event is usually in the past tense. It also means that most times when we use hardly, scarcely, and barely, we are going to be seeing us using the past perfect tense. If hardly, scarcely, and barely are in the initial position, it means therefore that the subject and auxiliary verb are inverted. Inversion of verb means that the verb comes before the subject. And this is common in English language. However, the natural order when we write a sentence in English is that we have the subject followed by the verb. So let us look at an example. Hardly had the rain stop when the sun came out. This is suggesting that one event happened before another. The sun came out before the rain stopped. Another sentence says, scarcely had I arrived at school when the bell rang. Let us now move on. Another special case that you will see oftentimes in looking at your construction shift item is the use of no sooner than or had. The information says that no sooner is used to show that one thing happens immediately after another. It is often used with the past perfect and usually followed by that. Basically saying that when we use the word no sooner, we are going to be seeing the word than or had further on in the sentence. If the second event occurs immediately after the first, we can express the idea using no sooner than or had. Note that the structure no sooner introduces the event that occurred first. When we use the phrase no sooner, it is suggesting that that is the first action that occurred and than and had would indicate the second action. Let us look at some examples. No sooner had I arrived at school than the bell rang. I want to just point out before I go further that in using no sooner, it did say that we're going to be looking at the past perfect. The past perfect is a verb tense used to talk about actions that were completed before some point in time. It means therefore that we're going to be using words like had. So the example says, no sooner had I arrived at school than the bell rang, or no sooner had we heard the screams than we reached the room. The first action which occurred clearly is one, they heard the screams and then they reached the room. And in the other example, the first example, they arrived at school and then the bell. Please note that it is incorrect to say no sooner I arrived at school than the bell rang because the auxiliary verb had must be placed before the subject. Let us look at an example. We had hardly completed our journey when the storm approached. You're asked for this question to begin with the expression no sooner. The expression no sooner is used to show that one thing happens immediately after another. No sooner is also used to indicate the first action that occurred. In beginning with the expression no sooner, we need to remember that we will only use expressions like than or had. It therefore means that has the storm or for the storm would possibly not be a viable option. The sentence should therefore read no no sooner had we completed our journey than the storm approached. The option that we would select would be than the storm. Let us now look at other special cases. How to use even though, in spite of, despite, although, and though. Words like in spite of, despite, although, even though, and though are seen as contrasting ideas. They are used to link two contrasting ideas or show that one fact makes the other fact surprising. After in spite of and despite, we use a noun. It's called a gerund. This is verbs ending with ing or we use a pronoun. So let's go again. Once we use in spite of and despite, we are expecting that the, the verb that follows it will end with a ing or it will be followed by a noun or pronoun. For examples, in spite of the quarrel, they remained best friends. The quarrel in this case is seen as a noun and so in spite of is followed by the noun. Another example says, in spite of completing his degree, he could find no job. Notice again, in spite of is followed 
followed by a word that ends with a verb that ends with ing. When we use the expression although and even though, we use a subject and a verb. The examples are, although I don't agree with you, I think you're an excellent friend. Please notice that although is followed by a subject, then a verb. In the next example, notice that even though is followed by a noun and followed by the verb. Now that you understand how we would use these cases, let us look at an example. The sentence reads, although she was ill, he attended the function. Remember, I did point out earlier that when we use the expression, even though it should be followed by a subject, then a verb. The instruction says you should begin the sentence with even though. The options given are he attended, did attended, but he attended, when he attended. The only options we are left with, therefore, is he attended. The sentence when reconstructed would be even though he attended the function, he was ill. Let us now move on to another case, another special case. Using so and that. The information says the phrase so slash that simply means to the level described. We use it to talk about purpose, why an action is done, or to introduce clauses of reason and explanation. It is often used with modal verbs. What are modal verbs? Modal verbs are used to show possibility, intent, ability, or necessity. Because they're a type of auxiliary verb or helper verbs, was, were, am, um, and those verbs, they are used together with the main verb in a sense. It means, therefore, that when we use so and that, we are expecting to see the use of auxiliary verbs or modal verbs in a sentence. So we are going to be seeing words like can and could and may and will and might and should and must being used with the main verb because we are looking at the possibility of something happening. Let's look at some examples. This morning, the construction was so loud that we could not see. The sentence is basically saying that the construction was loud to a level that prevented them from sleeping. So in this case represents the action and that represents the purpose. Almost like a cause and effect. When asked to begin a sentence with so, please note that a verb will often fall. However, when used in the middle of the sentence, it can be placed before the modifier, adjective or the adverb, to intensify the quality, for example, so that, or it can be paired together. The example says, he decided to stay at home so that he could watch the reruns of Loudos. Notice that in one example, it says that if the sentence actually begins with the word so, it must be followed by a verb. It can be paired together, as we see in the last example, or it can be separated with and a modifier, an adjective or a verb in between the two. Let us look at an example of how we can use so and that in a sentence. The sentence reads, the players were so fatigued after their match and they rested for a while. The instruction says that we should begin the sentence with so. The options are when they, that they, for they, than they. Remember, when asked to begin a sentence with the word so, please note that a verb will follow. So after so, must come a verb. However, if we are using it in the middle of the sentence, it can be placed between an adverb or an adjective. We can reconstruct the sentence by saying, so fatigued, which is the verb there, were the players after the match that they rested for a while. The option selected, therefore, would be that they. This has taken us to the end of our video for today. I do hope that the lesson was valuable to you. You did learn something from it. Just in case you needed any form of assistance, please remember to leave a comment, reach out to me in the comment section and I will respond as soon as possible. Don't forget to like this video. Again, leave your comment. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so that you can be informed when a new video is posted and it will be. Until then, bye.